Hi everyone, this is Jim. I'm going to uh, talk in this video about the uh, call system. Uh, it's another one of these D4, D5 openings, similar to the Stonewall attack, where white avoids playing the main move of uh, C4 and looks for uh, other ways to play, building up a uh, strong center with a pawn triangle and, um, and then continuing with an attack on the king, typically. Um, so let's start out with a little bit of uh, nomenclature. Um, the, uh, the call system, let's see, I'll just put some moves out here, is when you play um, e3 here, and then you play c3, and um, this really is the setup of the call system. You get this pawn triangle, and uh, you get the knight here, so you're not playing the move uh, uh, f4 immediately. You're, you're blocking the f-pawn, although sometimes the f-pawn comes into the game uh, later. Now this might continue with uh, e6 and bishop to d3, pretty typical uh, position for the call system. If we back up a little bit, if um, if white at this point decides to um, bring the bishop outside the pawn chain, but then he still intends to play this um, setup with the pawn triangle here, this is the London system. So the bishop goes to f4, um, say c5, Pawn to e3, defending the center, knight c6, and c3. And we see the same uh, pawn triangle. The difference between the uh, London system and the call system is just uh, the location of that bishop. And uh, let's see. Well, I, I did a few things differently. Black can play, you know, with either e6 or knight c6 in many of these cases. So the difference on the black side is not so great. Um, and then there's a couple other openings that are also in the same family. Let's back up here. Instead of going to um, f4 with the bishop, the bishop can also come out to um, g5. And this is known as the Tory attack. Say e6 is typically played here to, uh, <clears throat> so that the queen can take back the knight and uh, there won't be any pawn damage. e3, c5, c3. Okay, so we have the Tory attack here. We have the uh, the London system, and yeah, let's erase these. <laughs> erase these, <clears throat> and uh, and the call system. So uh, it all just uh, the name changes according to the placement of the bishop, but um, all of these systems have the uh, have the uh, pawn triangle in common. And then there's one related system known as the uh, called Sukertort system. So let's show how that could come about after e3 c5, instead of going with uh, c3, um, white can also play with b3. And after e6, bishop b2. This is the call Zuckertort. So similar kind of idea, pretty solid center, but the bishop is developed along uh, this diagonal as well. <clears throat> so my plan is I'm going to cover all of these openings, and then uh, uh, I'm going to look at them from white's point of view. And then after I'm done, I will do a video uh, taking a look at it from uh, Black's point of view and seeing if I can find some setup for Black that would be uh, decent against all of those openings. Because you don't really, uh, you don't see these openings so often, they're not so common, but they're often enough, um, and they're more popular at the club level than they are at, uh, at the high level, so you won't see examples of, a, of these openings at high level games. So it, it's useful <clears throat> if you're a club player to have a system that, where you can play against these. And uh, after I've done that, I'll basically basically have covered all of the D4, D5 openings, all that I have to say, at least at the moment, about D4, D5 openings. So I will uh, put those into a playlist at that point. But that's my plan. So let's um, continue with the, uh, with the call system. So the first game I wanted to show you was the, played in uh, 1930 in Nice, France between Edgar Call and John O'Hanlon. So the call system is really uh, deservedly named after Edgar Call. It's uh, something that he played often against uh, the top players of his day, and he really worked out a lot of the ideas in the opening. Um, oh, by the way, the name Call is, uh, there's some debate about how it should be pronounced. I didn't find any single authoritative source, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to call it the, the call system because that's how I learned it. But, uh, well, there are other, other ways that it's uh, uh, you know, it's sometimes referred to as the Kale system or the Kale system. I, I think uh, Kale is, is probably wrong because there's no accent over the E, but uh, anyway, what do I know? Um, so D4, D5, Edgar is playing John O'Hanlon. Um, knight of three, 
knight f6, e3, c5. We see some very typical moves here, c3. And we've got the typical call system set up, and the bishop comes out to d3. That's the, the main, the main uh, setup for the pieces, knight on f3, bishop on d knight on f3, bishop on d3, and the pawns of this very solid triangle here. Um, this move bishop d6 is a little bit controversial. It's not bad. I've looked at it at the engine, and definitely it's a playable move here. And uh, the uh, the chess engine, you know, rates the call system as only uh, equal for white or, or only slightly better. So it's not like uh, you're going for a huge advantage out of the opening. You're going for kind of a slow buildup, and that's the uh, philosophy you have to uh, stick with. But um, this bishop on d6 can become a target, so it might be more prudent to develop it to e7, e7 just something to keep in mind. Um, knight bd2, knight bd7. I often like to develop my knight to c6 also as another uh, minor refinement. But this point here, actually the knight on uh, d7 has uh, some major points, and we'll see that in the game. So um, white continues here with castles, black castles. White goes rook e1. So white is sort of telegraphing his intentions. He's going to play the move e4, and that is the key idea in the call system. He's just playing for the c4 break. He's got a solid center, so he can get away with it. That's the point of c3, is to support the uh, d pawn after the e pawn is uh, gone past. And, uh, and he's just going to open things up for a kingside attack. He's got all his pieces set up. Uh, in fact, you can see this configuration, the bishop here, the knight here, and the queen here is the setup for the typical uh, Greek gift sacrifice. Um, the main thing that uh, white has to accomplish is uh, white needs to chase that knight away so that the h7 square is unprotected. Um, black makes a slight mistake here with rook e8. I think this is the first real uh, mistake in the game, and he starts to get into a little bit of trouble. Um, some other alternatives from the chess engine, it, it recommends actually a bishop to e7. Uh, so that's that's a sign that maybe bishop d6 in this particular case wasn't the best square for the bishop. But, um, well, let's say you don't want to go back. Um, you could continue with uh, c4. There's another idea. Kicking the bishop and just expanding on the queen side. This is a very double-edged way to play. Black is going for a queen side attack, and white is going for a king side attack. And, uh, you know, both sides have chances. Um, and a third idea here is to play... Uh, b6 and just prepare to develop your bishop along this diagonal um, because the knight's sort of, sort of blocking this diagonal. And all these are very reasonable setups for uh, for black. But uh, rook e8, as is played in the game, is slightly dubious and white strikes immediately with e4. White is going to get that move in as soon as possible. And now there's a big threat of uh, e5 and that's also the reason why this uh, bishop on d6 is sometimes not well placed because it's a uh, it uh, gives a tempo to white in a way. Black is forced to respond. Um, sometimes black can respond with e5. It might even be playable here. Uh, but the most common way to respond is to take. And I think this is okay, although white is better because this, this rook is not necessarily well placed here. So maybe there's kind of a wasted tempo. But it's not like um, black is lost either. But, but white has some kind of edge at this point. Knight takes, bishop takes. And then I think the next move is, is really the big mistake that um, causes the game to uh, get out of control for black. As the black player here, I would automatically throw in the move knight f6 uh, right here because this, um, this bishop is a target here. Uh, white doesn't want to give up that bishop, so it's going to gain a tempo and when the bishop retreats. And secondly, the knight is, uh, is the piece you want to have on this f6 square. It defends h7, and it's just a good all-round defender of the king side. So knowing what kind of attack is in store from uh, having faced this type of system myself. I, I would just instinctively play knight to f6 there. I think, um, you know, this game was played early enough in the history of the opening that maybe the, the best ways of defense weren't quite worked out. But, uh, well, let's see what happens. Uh, Black tried something a little more adventurous. He uh, wasn't content with uh, just uh, pedestrian defense with knight f6. He uh, takes in the center c takes d4, and if he can get away with this, uh, this might be good. The chess engine actually thinks that, um, well, queen takes is good, or knight takes. Those are top choices. Uh, but the third choice here is uh, what was played, and it's an interesting play. Uh, what Kali goes for is the sack right here. And um, <clears throat> in fact, this is actually not quite 
uh, correct. Black can, with uh, exact play, draw this position, but he has to uh, figure things out on the fly in the game. Not always an easy thing to do. And uh, there's only one one path to draw, and the other paths lead to defeat. So, so this is an interesting kind of sacrifice. Um, so he takes. Now the knight comes in. Knight to g5. Check. Notice that the bishop back here on c8 is de is defending that knight. So um, that that's uh, very helpful in this case. And now the king came forward to g6, and that is actually the losing move. If he had played king to g8, um, there is a drawing line here. So, but you of course you have to calculate all this in advance, and you have to find the drawing idea. So um, white plays uh, queen to h5, and uh, well, if you want to, maybe you can pause the video here and see if you can find a way to defend this position with black. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now. Um, it's queen to f6. Defending this uh, f7 pawn is really important because otherwise white can do this trick of taking here and then coming back and then uh, bringing the rook into the game. I guess the rook can get in through this square and that would be pretty fatal. But queen to f6 guards the f7 point and allows the check. There's no way to stop the check at this point. The king runs to f8. And let's see, it continues. The line continues with knight e4, and the queen can go to e5. And I guess this is the second key idea is that when the king, queen gets chased away, um, there's counter threats here against h2. And there's just enough for uh, black to hold this. Black can uh, keep a draw here. Uh, even so, it's not easy to play from this point either. Um, but one point is, I mean, black would like to play this move bishop to... Uh, <clears throat> bishop to um, g4 here. Take away that flight square for the king. I should erase some of these arrows, huh? Um, yeah, bishop to g4 takes away the flight square from the king and threatens uh, the queen here, checkmate. Um, but actually, um, black can answer that by counter-sacrificing, taking on h7, forcing a trade of queens and giving up the bishop and uh, getting into an even position that way. So it is possible to defend that. Um, Anyway, uh, black played king g6 here, and now it's actually game over. Um, but it's interesting to watch how the uh, game proceeds. h4 is uh, is defending the knight, and um, so that, that eliminates some ideas of the queen giving back some material and, uh, well, frees up the pieces to move and control some squares. Also introduces the idea of the pawn coming forward with check. <laughs> so... Uh, dangerous situation. The rook comes over here to h8 to stop the pawn from coming forward. Although, actually, I think uh, h, h, uh, h5 check is playable there. But uh, he went, Kahl went with another sacrifice here, which is uh, interesting. And the second sacrifice is rook takes e6 check. So uh, not, not content with sacrificing his bishop, he now sacrifices the rook. But, uh, well, if the rook gets taken, it's actually a forced mate. So, um, if uh, pawn takes rook, then queen d3 check. Uh, the king uh, doesn't have too many squares to go to. King f6 is the square that survives the longest. The queen comes over here to f3 check. Um, the king runs this way. The queen comes in and mates, so the king has to come back. And then um, the queen comes into f7 check and driving the king over to uh, h6. And then, um, let's see, knight to e6 with a discovered check. King drops back, and queen there is mate. So pretty mate. And uh, so this is uh, the kind of thing you can get out of this opening. Uh, let's see. Well, let's continue with the game. Uh, black played knight f6, but um, this also loses. Now h5 check. And uh, he ran away with the king. Uh, let's see. Can't take it with the knight uh, or the king. He could try taking with the rook, but I think he gets made it in a similar fashion with uh, queen to d3. So he tried uh, king to h6 here, which uh, does it, uh, <clears throat> uh, which uh, keeps, fends off the mate for a little bit, but allows another tactic here. So if you want to spot a nice little tactical idea from white here, there's an, another chance for you to look for it. Okay, in this position, white played rook takes d6. And uh, the idea is that if uh, queen takes, the knight here is check. 
so uh, and picks up the queen so that uh, that rook can't be taken. And let's see, tried queen a5. Now we have knight to f7 check. King drop back to h7. Actually, it's it's all over at this point, and uh, because uh, the material, you know, white has recouped the material, and the king is uh, on the run still after queen b3 check. He resigned, so um, yeah, let's count the materials. Queen, two rooks and two pieces versus queen, two rooks and two pieces. So yeah, white got all his material back. He's up in pawns, and he's still attacking. So um, this is probably something like a forced mate in this position too, but in any case, uh, a nice game from Edgar Colley. The next game I wanted to show you was played by uh, George Koltanowski in a blindfold simul. So he played this game while he was blindfolded and playing more than one player. I don't know how many players were in the simul, but uh, anyway, quite a, quite a feat. Um, Koltanowski was uh, one of the grandmasters that uh, took up the call system after after call. Uh, well, actually, call died at a young age, so he uh, he uh, stuck with his system throughout his life, but. Um, not so many grandmasters picked it up after that. I think uh, they, they found ways to deal with it, and, and so they just searched for advantages in other directions. But uh, Koltanowski liked this system, and he particularly liked it uh, when playing against uh, weaker players or playing in simuls like this. So uh, let's see how he handled it. He had a slightly different approach. So d4, d5, knight f3, knight, C, knight f6, e3, e6, so all very standard. Bishop d3, c5, so exact same position we've seen before, c3. Uh, but knight c6 now instead of developing the bishop, knight bd2. Anyway, this knight wants to come over here. Well, the c3 square is taken. I guess that's the main point. So it's one of the uh, one of the two squares available for the knight to develop. And it um, looks to hop over here on the king side in one way or another. So bishop e7, black in this case, is avoiding the d6 square. Um, Koltanowski castles, black castles, and now um, this is what I mean about having a different approach. What Koltanowski liked to do is take here first. He would take on c5, bishop goes here, and then he pushes the pawn forward with e4. And um, this is not as threatening. You don't have to take that pawn now. And in fact, uh, white doesn't. White just plays uh, queen to c7. With the bishop out of the way, uh, you know, there's no threat of the fork on um, on um, e5, and also because the, the uh, d-pawn was traded off. So the queen goes to e2, um, putting putting more force behind the e-pawn. The c-pawn still needs to move out of the way so that this uh, bishop's diagonal, the light squared diagonal here, can open up. And now knight to e5 was played. This seems to be the first uh, real mistake of the game. Um, the chess engine thinks that black is fine, but needs to play a little bit cautiously. Um, you know, one idea is to play um, h6 here. Just uh, prevent that knight from hopping into g5 and just kind of sit on this position. Another idea is to play uh, b6, um, just uh, preparing to develop this uh, light squared bishop on this diagonal, or perhaps out here if uh, if it were possible. I guess right now they, that's not possible because of the queen and bishop lineup. But those are a couple ways that... Um, Black could develop. Knight to e5 seems to be um, helping, helping uh, white in some way, although it does lead to a lot of exchanges. So I think black is thinking that uh, he can exchange off enough pieces to take the sting out of the attack and uh, try and survive this encounter, encounter with uh, Koltanowski that way. So queen takes, and uh, now the knight comes into f3, the knight from uh, d2, going to the square to replace the knight that was just there. Queen gets kicked back. Um, maybe right here, a slightly more accurate move. Cancel that. Sorry. A slightly more accurate move would have been uh, queen to h5 when the queen got kicked rather than retreating. It could stay over here on the uh, on the king side and help defend, and also maybe with some attacking or counterattacking ideas. A little bit um, tricky to judge this kind of position, whether the queen is going to be safe over there or, or not. But, uh, well, the knight is not going to harass the queen right away, and the bishop is on a different diagonal, so it looks like the queen ought to be okay there for a while. And, uh, anyway, the chess engine recommends that. Um, but, uh, in the game, black played queen c5, queen c7, dropping back this way, and Koltanowski pushes on with e5. The tempo on the knight, the knight gets kicked back, and now, of course, <laughs> you've got the, the perfect setup here for the, uh, 
<clears throat> the Greek gift sacrifice. The bishop, the knight has been chased away. White controls the uh, the f6 square with this pawn, and uh, this is just completely winning. It's not like the other case where uh, black had some drawing chances. There's actually no defense. Um, not only has uh, the queen been drawn away from this diagonal, but, uh, well, it couldn't play to f6 anyway because the pawn is controlling that square, and uh, there's just no hope here. Uh, the, queen, the king retreats uh, to g8. He gets mated in short order. The, the rook has to move out of the way, and then the queen can check can take on uh, f7 with the rook out of the way. So you get that typical mating pattern. So the king came forward, but, uh, well, even here, the king is not safe. King to, queen to d3 check. Notice that um, the bishop is defending defending the knight. So um, so the queen can give these checks with, with impunity. Doesn't have to worry about king takes knight. Um, black blocks with the f-pawn. Queen comes over here to g3, setting up another discovered attack on the king. Um, white's queen tries, to, black's queen tries to get into the action with uh, queen takes e5. Also, hoping to trade off the queen and uh, and uh, escape the attack that way. But uh, Koltanowski's not having it. He brings his bishop out, chases the queen away. The queen uh, has no great squares, has no way to retreat, really. Um, queen f6. Queen f6 maybe is playable, but that would run into, uh, yeah, that would run into a discovered attack. And that probably wins the queen. So anyway, queen to e2 is played. And now... Knight to f3, discovered check on the king. King goes to f6. Um, actually, king f7 might be slightly uh, more accurate. He might live longer on that square. But anyway, we're, we're just giving the attacking ideas here. Rick a1, chasing the queen back. It drops all the way back to a6. Queen h4, check. Driving the king around. Uh, let's see, the king went to g6. And now b4. <laughs> and this is one move that uh, I have to say it really impresses me. Uh, you have to remember this is a, a simultaneous exhibit that George is playing blindfold, right? So <clears throat> it just shows how, uh, how he has accurate sight of the whole board. He's got this attack going on. You know, maybe it's a common pattern that he's played many times before, but he's not forgetting about his resources on the other side of the board. He's uh, pushing this pawn forward to kick this bishop around maybe drive it off this diagonal so his queen can come in here. Um, black counterattacks with uh, e5, hitting uh, white's bishop. Um, and uh, Koltanowski just takes there. This bishop drops back to d6. And now the queen comes into g5 with a check. King goes to f7. And uh, queen takes g7, check. And it's a forced mate. <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty nice. Actually, if you want to pause and see if you can find uh, the mating ideas here, I will. I will give them to you. Yeah, um, uh, Black just resigned at this point. But the point is that uh, if the king goes to that square, then knight coming into uh, g5 is mate. And if the king goes back to the other square, then we have bishop takes with a discovered check, and that will be followed by queen here to. Uh, e7 will be uh, checkmate with the bishop uh, guarding the escape square there. So um, anyway, nice game by uh, Koltanowski. Here's another Koltanowski game that I wanted to show you. Let's um, I go through the opening moves a little bit quickly since we've been through this before. Let's see. Notice that black didn't start with the d5, but started with knight f6. But after a few moves, we'll transpose back into the same position. And here, um, black played something a little different. Went with knight c6 instead of knight to d7. I think that's good. That's a little more active post. And um, he went with uh, bishop to d6 here. And Koltanowski played his usual setup with uh, exchanging first on c5 and then pushing e4 <clears throat> after castling. So, um, as always, uh, white wants to get... Uh, well prepared before pushing that pawn to e4. And this time black decided to uh, take the pawn. Uh, last time in the previous game we saw black sat around and, and let that pawn be pushed. So taking is a reasonable alternative here. Um, also queen c7 is a playable move as well, but uh, black took in this case. Knight takes. And he could continue exchanging, although he doesn't have another knight 
to jump into f6. That's uh, the difference between the knight on c6 and the knight on d7. If the knight is on d7, then it's often the case that you want to take right away, and then after a uh, bishop or some other piece shows up on, uh, uh, well, ends up on e4 after the exchange, then you, the next knight hops in here to chase it back. Um, that's not playable because the knights come out to c6. But, uh, well, the knight c on c6 puts more pressure on the center, so pluses and minuses there. Uh, let's see, the knight here, so since uh, black decided not to trade the knight, he, need, he wanted to uh, preserve his bishop, so he just drops back here. And now if uh, white chooses to take, it'll just help black develop his dark squared bishop to a good square on f6. So uh, um, white's are not in a hurry to capture either. Queen e2 is played going to c7, bishop to g5. So maybe threatening to take this knight off and uh, set up some kind of attack on h7. So black decides it's time to uh, take some action. Here he goes for the trade with knight takes e4, queen takes. Now this does invite uh, this battery <laughs> and uh, black needs to do something about it. So he plays uh, g6. So unlike the previous game, the previous two games actually, there's not going to be a sacrifice on h7 here. But uh, while well, that doesn't mean the attack is over, um, Koltanowski just uh, brings his rook to the center, maybe preparing to play a knight to uh, e5. That's often a good post. But black decides to trade off the dark squared bishops. Uh, you might want to question that decision a little bit because uh, because he does have dark squared weaknesses here. But on the other hand, that bishop was not well placed on e7 at this point. It really needed to uh, find its way over to g7 somehow, and maybe there was no no good way to do that. <clears throat> so uh, so black decided to trade. Knight comes to g5, now rick to e8, and uh, rick a to d1, just bringing both ricks out to the center. Uh, queen to h4, by the way, was playable already. Um, so I think actually after queen h4, white is has got a winning attack. So maybe rook e8 was the wrong idea. I didn't check this out, but I think uh, black can't have been too far wrong at this point. But after rook e8 and queen h4, he's already in trouble. Um, but Koltanowski first played rook a to d1. Um, black went with queen to e7, bringing the queen over to um, provide some protection around the king side. Now the queen comes to h4. And so we have this typical combination of queen and knight on h7. So h5 is played, and now g4 right away. No, no hesitation. Once you've started that attack, you've got to, uh, uh, well, this is his decision to continue full steam ahead. <clears throat> um, let's see. So the king went to g7, lifting up off the back rank. This is often a good defensive idea, allowing the rook to come over here. Let's see. Uh, bishop to b5 was played. Uh, pinning this knight. Um, the bishop comes out to d7, unpinning and uh, opening up the back rank for the, the rooks. Um, it seems like this was the last chance for uh, for black actually to defend. It looks like black needed to play the move uh, f6 here and uh, chase that knight away. Just to allow uh, some pawn damage over here on the queen side, but uh, you know, chasing away some of these dangerous attacking pieces, and it seems like uh, black can defend this position, although it does look uh, like a position that's full of uh, weaknesses, <laughs> and uh, you have to wonder about the, the lack of development. But, uh, well, if you trust the chess engine, black can still hold that position. After bishop d7, it seems like it's a losing effort, so it just shows how quickly things can go downhill. So uh, Koltanowski continues with uh, taking on h5, and now uh, rook to h8 was played. And, uh, well, here's your chance to uh, look for a tactic. So um, it's white's turn to move and see if you can find a, uh, a tactic that wins material. Okay, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. Um, the key idea here is the uh, the weakness of the queen. It's uh, when the rook came to h8, the rook was no longer defending the queen. The only other piece defending the queen is this knight. So Koltanowski took off that knight. And then now hopefully you see this idea. The queen is completely undefended and the knight can move with check. And so this uh, wins a pawn and a queen for a rook and a knight. So that's a pretty good exchange for white and in fact it's winning. So black does 
the best he can. He takes the checking piece. He can't can't take the queen because he's in check, of course. So takes the um, takes the knight, and he also gets a rook. So he got a knight and a rook for a queen. And uh, but uh, White has got a, a killer attack at this point, and I think I'm just going to uh, go forward. There was a nice finish here. So um, the queen gobbles up a few pawns, and uh, Koltanowski brings some more material in, starts threatening mates over here against the king. And, of course, black has got counter threats, but uh, they don't amount to a whole lot. And uh, this is the point uh, where the game finishes. This uh, rook comes in with a check, grabbing uh, another pawn. So he's uh, two pawns up, as well as having a queen versus rook and bishop. So quite a large material advantage. And uh, this may appear to be losing a rook, but uh, if you didn't spot the tactic, <laughs> there it is. Queen to h8 is mate. A very nice finish to that game. The last game I wanted to show you was a game between uh, Edgar Call and uh, Jose Raul Capablanca. So this was played in Carlsbad in 1929, and it shows a different kind of setup against the uh, uh, against the uh, call system. So let's see how uh, see how Capablanca dealt with this. So d4, knight f6. <laughs> it shows uh, to call's credit he was not afraid to play this kind of uh, kind of setup against anyone. Knight f3, b6, and this is Capablanca's idea. He's actually going for a uh, queen's Indian setup. And uh, this leads to an interesting position, e3, bishop b7. So if you're a regular Queen's Indian player, uh, this is definitely one way that you can deal with uh, these systems like the call system. Uh, knight bd2, e6. Yeah, this completes the Queen's Indian setup. We have the pawn on e6, the pawn on b6, the fianchettered bishop, and the knight here on, uh, on f6. And uh, call goes with bishop to d3. Notice he didn't. Uh, he wasn't in a hurry to play c3 here, uh, but now Capablanca goes with c5. Um, call castles here. The knight comes out to c6, and now he goes with c3. So he has completed his setup. He's got the the three pawns here, the the pawn triangle. He's got his bishop on d3, his knight on f3, and the other knight on d2. So he's playing exactly the same setup uh, against. Um, <clears throat> against a completely different setup from black. And th that's one of the things that's attractive about these kinds of systems is that you can you can play them against almost anything. So it sort of uh, cuts down on the amount of work you have to do learning the openings. Okay, so bishop to e7, and now e4, going with this classic e4 push. But now the e4 push uh, doesn't come with any tempo. It's not uh, biting on anything. Um, Capablanca takes this moment to trade off the... Uh, the uh, d-pawn, and uh, Call decides to take back with the knight. Maybe he didn't want this knight to be tied down defending that d-pawn. If he took with the pawn, it would always be under pressure. Whereas now, if the knight trades, um, then Call can develop his other knight to f3 and use that in the attack. But Capablanca just castles. Queen to e2, knight to e5. Yeah, he's not, not interested in that trade. He just puts his knight on a good square. Bishop drops back to c2. Um, Karl doesn't want to trade off his good bishop. Um, the queen goes to c8. And, uh, well, it's not a good bishop just yet, but uh, we see Karl has ideas here. He's not uh, not giving up on his idea. And the way he makes that into a good bishop is with this move, f4, kicking the knight back. Um, now, Capablanca throws in this move, bishop a6. It comes with tempo because it hits the queen. Um, at first, you might think Call has blundered here. He's giving up the exchange, but in fact, that doesn't that doesn't work. If um, well, Call just plays Queen D1. If Capablanca here were to take on F1, Bishop takes F1 is met by F takes E5, and now um, for the moment, White is the exchange down. But there are two pieces hanging. The pawn is also attacking this knight. And this bishop is under attack. So, in fact, that uh, is winning for white. That white gets two pieces for the rook. So, um, so Call didn't overlook that, and he's not losing the exchange here. Um, the knight just drops back to c6 now, and the rook goes up to f3, which is part of his plan anyway. Uh, often in the case of these uh, attacks on the king side, you want to get that rook lift in. Um, so g6, defending against uh, potential threats to h7, uh, looking ahead to see that there's a potential threat with the combination of that 
rook that knight and the e-pawn coming forward. The e-pawn comes forward with tempo, so you have to be a little bit far-sighted seeing these attacks coming. Um, so this knight uh, goes over to b3. Now there's an exchange. Brings the other knight into d4. Um, the bishop goes back to uh, b7, having done its work on a6. Now it's looking at the center and, and preventing, for the moment, the uh, push. Uh, the queen goes to e2. Bishop to uh, c5, hitting the knight. Rook goes over to h3, unpinning the e-pawn. Queen to c6. And uh, black is starting to develop counter threats along this diagonal. Uh, e5 anyway, opening up that diagonal for himself, but also opening it up for his opponent. Um, and the knight hops into uh, d5. It got chased away from the king side. So it's looking a little bit scary, but it's going to take a while for white or for um, <clears throat> yeah for white to get all of his pieces over to uh, participate in this king side attack. He's got the queen somewhat mobilized, the knight somewhat mobilized, but the uh, well more than somewhat mobilized. Those two pieces are, are mobilized, but this uh, bishop is uh, biting on a uh, pawn triangle here that's going to be a little bit hard to break down, and the knight is pinned. So. Uh, so white's attack is a little bit slower than what we saw on the other systems. Uh, let's see, he went with queen up two here. And now bishop takes d4. Capablanca decides to take off that uh, piece before it becomes dangerous. Although it wasn't unpinned just yet. It was going to take a few more moves. Although, um, I, no, I take that back. The knight was threatening the uh, queen, wasn't it? Yeah, when the queen went to f2, that was threatening. Knight takes queen already. So Capablanca takes off the knight. Um, Pawn takes back rook to c8, hitting the bishop here. Bishop goes to d1. Also getting it on a better diagonal, although it needs uh, maybe some uh, pawn support to uh, <coughs> really feel its effect. All in all, a good example of uh, how this uh, counter pressure keeps, keeps white from getting an attack organized. Um, and now Capablanca decides to... Uh, open things up a little bit on the king side, try and try and undermine this uh, strong center with uh, f6. Um, queen goes to h4, attacking h2, but the rook lifts to f7. Another point of that f6 move, it gave a little lift to the rook. Um, the bishop goes to f3. Um, oddly enough, the chess engine thinks that white is still doing okay here, but needs to uh, back off on the attack. Sometimes this happens. Your uh, attack hits a point where um, your opponent has defended accurately and there's no further progress to be made and you really your best course is to reorganize. The chess engine wants to uh, reorganize starting with rook f3 and then just dropping the queen back and uh, continuing the game in that fashion. <clears throat> and it seems like uh, like it would be an even game. It seems like black is equalized, but uh, but black is not yet winning. After um, after the move in the game, which was bishop to f3, it seems like black is already better. He starts to get some pressure now against white center with queen to c4. So the tables are starting to turn. Let's see, the bishop came out to e3 to defend, but, uh, well, the knight can take that. This is a interesting trade. Um, Kali is giving up his dark squared bishop, but he's getting the... Uh, the uh, light squared bishop, and now he's got a good unopposed bishop on the light squares. Sorry, let's erase those guys. And he also has uh, unmasked an attack on this knight, and he's simultaneously attacking the uh, rook. So he may have thought, may have thought that this would uh, actually lead to an advantage for him. But the knight can move a tempo. Knight to f5 hitting the queen, and uh, after the queen drops back, um, then rook to c7 getting out of trouble. And uh, Capablanca is actually uh, uh, significantly better in this position. The bishop is hanging and the pawn is hanging. Um, let's see. Instead of queen e1, he could have tried queen f2. And the game might have continued. Rick to b8. Um, and then the bishop drops back to... Um, what's the best square? Oh, well, rick to c3 first, chasing the queen. Um, and then uh, he loses this pawn anyway. That's the point: is that you can't, you can't uh, take that pawn because of um, 
uh, well, you, you can't uh, you can't defend that pawn. It, it was attacked twice. That's what I meant to say. And now the bishop even has to come back to f3 because after the knight is on that square, the knight is threatening this check on uh, e2, uh, forking the king and the rook. So the bishop has to come back and defend that square. And so anyway, black is just a uh, pawn up in this position and uh, and is better. Uh, but in the game, uh, black is also better after queen e1. Rook to c7, um, bishop went to e4, and queen takes d4, check, cancel that. Queen took on d4 with check. And uh, Capablanca went on to win the game in about uh, five more moves, but I think that's uh, clear enough. So a good example of uh, defending against the call system using a, a queen's Indian setup. So that concludes this video, and then uh, next time I'm going to take a look at the uh, called Sukertort and the uh, Tori attack. See you then.